What's going on, guys? Seth and Chevy here. We just watched episode 15 of season one of Delicious in Dungeon. We're going to be going full spoilers ahead, so hopefully you've watched this episode. It'd be very weird for you to be watching a review for the 15th episode of anything without having watched any of it. So uh, if that is you, just hang out, I guess. Um, yeah, so let's do a real quick recap of what happened. And uh, this episode was kind of all over the place in terms of, like, uh, just the narrative. Uh, we start off with um, the... The original crew, not the new crew from the last episode, uh, still trying to find their way out of this dead end that they got themselves into. They try to climb out of there. Dragon flies over. Earthquake happens. They uh, come to the conclusion that the Mad Mage is rearranging the dungeon in basically defense of them being there. Um, so yeah, when trying to assess that situation, uh, Senshi goes into dad mode for some reason and needs to um, feed the children. Yeah. Um, and so he starts freaking out uh, that they need to eat and uh, they end up smelling flowers. So that means water. So they head in that direction. They find this uh, very floral area that they left. Graveyard pretty promptly yeah but it's like they walked those like there's bushes trees all sorts of yeah. shit didn't even look like it was the same place but uh they end up going there they run into some flower people some dryad whatever the hell they were called dryad flowers yeah um three of them they end up getting attacked by them while defending themselves uh when they cut through the dried flowers uh pollen comes out and they get hay fever in a very very dramatic way um they can't see they can't smell they can't do anything um Sen she ends up using um, uh, Chilchuck kind of as a way to see for him, but even Chilchuck eventually can't see. They start using other senses uh, like, um, oh, God, what did he use? He used wind. Feel, yeah. Yeah, feeling of wind, basically, to get the, the final blow. They end up surviving, um, but at what cost? They're all choked up from hay fever, which is ridiculous. Um, we had kind of a long segment of... Um, Marcel is going to start teaching Laos how to do magic, um, which is very kind of out of the blue, but her whole thing is she can't be the only one who um, uh, is doing this in case something happens to her. They need to have a plan B, basically, and uh, Laos is uh, you know, a good sport at everything or for everything, so he uh, he's down to do that. She starts teaching him the basically how to read uh, magic and how to do basic stuff. Uh, Senshi also decides that he needs to teach Chilchuck uh, just normal father-son things. Birds and the bees. For some reason. Um, I don't know why this episode Senshi's all of a sudden like, I'm your dad. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, they do that and then um, Laios ends up getting mana sickness, right? Yeah, because he's never cast spells before. Yeah. Uh, which is a thing. He starts basically tripping out, um, which was funny. He's laying on the floor. Uh, everything's shaking. They go to check out what's going on as they're doing that. Uh, the dungeon uh, close to them is starting to move now. They get elevated. They jump off while things are going crazy, and they end up running into a cockatrice. Cockatrice, yeah. Cockatrice, um, which is just a bigger basilisk. They run from it. They devise a plan um, to do basically what Laios did when they originally ran into a basilisk. Um, and try and freak it out. Marcel runs out. She has an explosion. It just basically gets its attention. Um, it attacks. Uh, Senshi is able to hit the chicken part in the head um, while the snake bites um, Marcel. And what happened to She it? blows the She blew off. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, she got bit. And apparently when they bite things, things turn to stone. So they're all freaking out. They take her back. Laos uh, starts freaking out that she got bit because he knows everything for some reason and uh, yeah, tells her to like take her pants off and get into a, 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 a position where it, when she freezes, she'll be, you know, not as awkward of position. Um, and she ends up making a pose while she's freaking out that uh, she gets frozen in and she looks really intense. Um, yeah. So while trying to devise how they're going to get her to basically come out of uh, her stone um, form, um, they either have to wait six months to 10 years. Uh, they need to find certain herbs that will get her um, out or um, they're going to have to find someone who can do magic to get her out. So um, during this time when they're kind of planning that out, Senshi just decides he's going to start making food. Um, uh, Chilchuck is looking for herbs 
and Laos is, uh, you know, reading magic and trying to figure out how to do this. They all basically um, do something to her at the same time while trying to figure this out, and she ends up coming out of the stone, so they're not sure who really did it, um, but something worked, and um, yeah, they end up eating after that. Um, fuck, what they make? <laughs> Earlier, they they made some really disturbing food in that that graveyard with uh, all the weird pumpkin things that had faces. Yeah, that was uh, really bizarre. It was like a pumpkin porridge with like cheesy onions, basically. Yeah, uh, just like when she was had the bowl and it was just like that face staring at him. It was yeah. ridiculous. But um, the, anyway, the second meal was um, he had used her as a, they needed her stable so she wouldn't yeah. fall over and break because that kills you at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because her eyelash fell off. Yeah, so to put her in a bowl, uh, he put the leftover onions uh, to ferment, and then he put another bowl on top and set her in the bowl to weigh down. So he was using her to help ferment while keeping her in place. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, what, uh, what, anything else happen after that? At the end of the episode? They just eat? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the episode. What do we think? Uh, I mean, it was it was, fun. It was it's we're kind of you know back to the the um uh, what word am I looking for here the the classic flow of the, the show the delicious and dungeon dude yeah because like the last few episodes have been a lot of like you know the the highs of like ending a a, a story arc and then also leading us into a second story arc with some pretty um you know bigger than we're used to storytelling happening in there and then them kind of coming back down because it's time for the journey again and so we kind of are going back into that flow um which is nice it's like you know the the uh the initial draw of the show was that them adventuring so um that's what we're getting here uh the humor as soon as they they ran into the the dryads um i didn't realize they weren't going to be dry as proper that they were a plant that was like a dryad but um i as soon as i saw them i was like oh those kind of look like dryads and they're like oh dryad flowers like well i was close enough you know but the uh the whole idea of them being unisex like like flowers basically and having like the ability to pollinate and and like or have fruit you know type of thing um was interesting though they went real crazy with the um, allergy symptoms and uh i enjoyed lyos just wandering around back and forth with his arms out calling for a sword as if the sword <laughs> ever listens to him. Um, Kenosuke. Yeah. Yeah. I never remember the name of that sword, but it just clicked. Cause um, he's whining about it. Yeah. Uh, I also, uh, thought it was kind of an interesting little tidbit and I don't know if it was purely hallucination or if we were getting a hint towards his family line just has an innate ability to, tune in to the uh, afterlife because when he was suffering from mana sickness, he could hear the ghosts of the village um, Mm -hmm. asking for death release, basically like they're sick of being stuck to this village. And we already kind of know that the mad King is trying to bring back this kingdom. And so they're probably bound there from this, this uh, mage and they've helped in the prior episodes as well. So uh, we're getting a little bit tidbits there. Uh, I assume because he used magic, he's kind of like similar Tapping to his sister, it. able to kind of tap into that. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if it, either it's a magic user thing or his family thing. Cause his sister also sees dead people, yeah. but um, I don't know if Marcel does. I don't think she does. Yeah. She, yeah. We haven't seen that yet. So um, it also acknowledged the, the route in which they learned magic was different too. So. Yeah, exactly. So um, that is an interesting little tidbit when that was happening that kind of went over quickly, but it did kind of reveal a little bit there. Yeah. It feels almost like in this, maybe I'm thinking too much about it cause they've done this to us now, but like the whole painting episode mm-hmm. was such like a weird episode, but it ended up having larger implications. And yep. I'm kind of wondering if we're kind of setting up pieces for larger implications with him. Well, Laos learning magic is like a pretty big deal. Yeah, he's so. basically going from fighter to paladin at this point, yeah, the way she's exactly. kind of setting him up. But, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the cockatrice. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Oh crap, those are dangerous." And and every other fantasy game. So and and sure enough, like they instantly were like, "Nope," and they ran. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, and then her being petrified was a fun moment. Uh, they even were had a little bit of fun with it. And her when they moved her, her eyelashes broke uh, on one eye only. And then when she, um, I don't know what other word to use, but thawed out, I'm going to use for now, even though it wasn't frozen. Um, one of her eyes was drawn thinner than the other because her eyelashes are missing. Well, even at so. one moment, she looks down and you could see her eyelashes on, on one, one eye, eye so yeah. i'm glad they even kept that detail so yeah that was fun that the they, they uh took care to do that so uh but yeah overall it's a fun episode uh you know it wasn't like crazy or anything like that but uh back to the roots basically the show so it was a pretty decent episode in terms of like variety we got action we got a lot of humor which i liked i'm glad we can kind of take a step back and get back to just things being funny every episode is funny but um you know in like a four episode um, streak, we were getting like, you know, a more impactful storytelling, mm-hmm. which I also liked. So Definitely. I've just been liking the show in general, but um, this episode does feel like, like you're saying, a return to form basically on um, just kind of the, the method to how the show has been for the most part. Um, the episode, you know, starts out um, kind of wild with them running into the dryads. Um, but of course there's the humorous element of like their, just kidding i love how when it released and it went into their nostrils or whatever they made it almost into this bigger thing like oh dude this goes in and blah blah blah, and they're describing hay fever yeah um and so it's you know it's it's debilitating but it's not like they're gonna die from poison or something um but that was fun also senshi's new uh fatherly instincts kicking in uh is really weird because he's been around for a while and this is the first time He's like, all of a sudden, like, I got to keep the young ones fed. Um, he's like trying to assess uh, Lyos's age. He could just ask him, but he do- he doesn't. Um, but he can see that the other two are still growing, which I thought Chilchuk was like 100 years old the or something. The other gnome said Chilchuk was like the oldest gnome or something like that. Yeah. And I was just like, and then he starts shooting like a kid. I'm like, I think you're just seeing his height and assuming but maybe things. maybe in his race... That's young. I, I just think Chill Trucks, or not Chill Truck. I just think Senshi's crazy. But. Well, <laughs> he definitely he definitely is. Um, even that scene, I, I skipped over in the recap because it's not really like uh, important to the story. But the, even the part where Lyos was gonna it's like work on him to was he gonna heal him. Yeah, practice healing magic. Yeah, and. <laughs> Of course, Senshi's weird about it because he doesn't like that shit. So he's like just like blushing and like sitting on the edge of the the table. Um, so yeah, he's 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 getting really weird about that. That doesn't help that like Laos too is being all like really weird about touching people. So it's mm-hmm. coming off like way unnecessarily um, yeah. uncomfortable for people. <laughs> um, but yeah, that uh that was funny. Senshi it's always funny um the cockatrice part was interesting as well because as soon as i saw that i was like is it another basilisk but you know they're quick to you know squash that and be like no it's this um and then yeah it turning marcel into stone was interesting so i was like is this gonna be like a multi-episode situation or they figured it out like really quick and i thought it was a lot of fun the way they did it um also the whole situation of her Turning to stone was comical in the sense that she just shows up and Lyle's just like, take your pants off. And I'm just like, what the fuck's that going to do? But yeah. uh, he's just trying to get her to be in a less awkward um, center of gravity position once she froze <laughs> so she doesn't fall over. And she ended up just being like <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Looking really intense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else? Um, no big things outside of Lyos. Uh, learning magic, which will have pretty big implications moving forward. Also, the hints of his bloodline has been interesting because in the last episode, the other uh, group was talking about rumors and how Laos and uh, his sister come from like some family. And here, you know, they're kind of hinting at like, you know, maybe it's your bloodline and why you're picking up magic so quickly. So mm-hmm. um, it's it's kind of interesting the hints they're giving us here um in an otherwise like you know just kind of fun episode we're we're getting a little bit of a momentum and you know laos and more information about him so which i i feel like is uh he's like one of the characters i think we need more stuff on so um, he has kind of turned into a um uh, a more likable character since the beginning of the show but um 
I feel like we know the least about him than like a lot of characters. So except for, you know, that he has a sister, but that's kind of over. He, we, he got the sister back and now she's gone again. So, um, yeah, overall, though, really good episode. Of course, I've liked every single episode of the show so far. I'd be surprised if we see one I don't like, but um, uh, really curious to see what happens next episode because this episode didn't really give us a lot in terms of where things are heading. Um, and I'm also really curious to see how other people come into play because last episode we saw a lot of people are at play now. And if you watch like the intro and the outro sequence, um, you see a lot of people. A lot, um, yeah. So it's going to be interesting. And then also like, you know, we're watching in real time the the mage changed the the structure of the dungeon too so that's uh another thing we got to witness and it released that monster so i'm wondering you know if the dungeons is going to get more challenging Mm -hmm. now so well and even marcel was like concerned that's the whole reason with the magic thing she's just like hey like we need another healer just in case like yeah so um because like she realizes they need to evolve to continue at this point. So, yeah, Laos is basically getting a class change. So, yeah, yeah in a more in a less like video gamey way, which is kind of yeah. nice. Like it, it feels more natural. So, true. Um, anything else? No, I mean, I'm looking forward to the next episode. Uh, you know, it's always a treat to to watch these. Uh, it's a good blend, like you kind of said, of of action, of comedy, plus triggers art style always makes it just fun to watch so and their animation is uh always fun especially when they're fighting the dryads you saw yeah. some uh very smooth uh, oh, yeah. animation those done really well it was quick but i noticed in those moments i'm like oh yeah they 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 can do do well uh, in terms of animation when they want to so yeah well let us know in the comments what did you guys think of this episode what were some of your favorite parts is there anything in this episode we didn't talk about that you want to talk about let us know in the comments where do you think things are going moving forward unless you know please no spoilers we have not read the manga and uh, we don't want those we want to go in blind so thank you and stay tuned we are right after this going to watch some more of um what's it called in english heavenly delusion heavenly delusion uh we are halfway through it we need to watch more of it um finish it we'll be doing a full season review and then of course sandland coming up soon and uh demon slayer mm-hmm. we got a lot of things uh moving forward so stay tuned for that and uh yeah um i've been Seth this but chevy until the next episode we will talk to you guys later